Hey Dino Dudes, what's up? It's me, the Meteor Raptor, and welcome back to another episode of the Meteor Raptor Reviews. Now, you guys, I know I've been gone a while, and I'm sorry. I've been watching a lot of movies, and I got a lot of reviews to film. So hopefully over the next week or two, there should be a bunch of reviews. Now tonight, I would like to say first that, that this review will be spoiler free, save for one small spoiler, and it's not really that much of a spoiler. <clears throat> Anyhow, tonight's movie is the 2015 mega blockbuster release, Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Oh yeah. Now guys, let me begin by saying, um... I didn't really know what to expect from this movie because I'm more of a Trekkie than I am a Star Wars fan. Don't get mad at me, okay? But at the same and the main reason is because Star Wars they had the prequel trilogy, which I liked numbers two and three. I actually liked Hacker the Clones who Revenge of the Sith, but oh I could not stand the Phantom Menace, but then again that's pretty much the same goes for everyone. The only good thing about that was Darth Maul. And even then, if you want to see more of him, you have to watch The Clone Wars, which was better than Phantom Menace. Anyhow, I'm not here to talk about why I don't like this franchise, because this movie blew my expectations out of the water. It exceeded every expectation I had by the droves. And you know what? This movie was hyped up like mad. And this thing was hyped up more than the Minions movie was. This thing was hyped up more than Age of Ultron. No, it was marketed more than Minions was, and the Minions movie really sucked. It was hyped up more than Age of Ultron, and you know what? It passed all the hype. The writing? We have an awesome story, which is still connected to the Star Wars lore of Episodes 4, 5, and 6. We have returning characters such as Han Solo, Princess Leia... Chewbacca, and all those guys who are absolute fan favorites. Now, we also have a host of new characters such as Poe, Rey, and Finn. All the new characters have been given a really good amount of backstory and actual reasons why you want to care about them. Although I will say, I am very interested to learn more about Rey and her family. Because you know what, I got theories, but then again, I think everyone has theories nowadays. Anyhow, the story is great the villain is actually pretty cool, and the the new threat they have, the First Order, is actually pretty cool. I like what they did. I mean, this movie actually had some pretty good humor. A lot of it came from just stormtroopers, actually, or whatever they were called. I'm pretty sure it was still stormtroopers. Anyhow, but this thing also does have a lot of really good references to episodes 4, 5, and 6, and... If you liked those, you're going to like this. Acting. Everyone does a great job acting. Okay? I'm just going to say everyone does a fantastic job at acting, say, for th three characters. The main two bad guys, certain scenes, they're supposed to be getting so angered and so they're supposed to go so intense that it goes from being sounding threatening and scary and angered to over-the-top comedic like a Saturday morning cartoon villain. Maybe that's what they were going for, I don't know, but they kinda looked not as threatening when they were just screaming at the top of their lungs. And so that's two characters. The other character, and this is kind of a spoiler, I'm giving you a heads up right now, uh, Mark Hamill's in this, Luke Skywalker is in this movie, he gets second billing, he says, n and he's only in this movie for maybe 30 seconds at the very end. He doesn't even say anything, and he gets second billing behind Han Solo, or behind Harrison Ford. So, uh, yeah, anybody want to explain that one to me? <sighs> Whatever. Special effects are absolutely amazing. I loved the lightsabers. They gave the lightsabers, like, new texture and new effects. The stormtroopers look great. The blast effects look great. The explosions are awesome. The Millennium Falcon has never looked better. Chewbacca still looks fantastic, but then again, it's Chewbacca. It would take a lot to mess that guy up. Uh, the sets, the costumes, everything was done really well. And you can tell a lot of work went into this movie. Music, it's John Williams. What do you guys expect? It's fantastic, it's beautiful, and it's Star Wars. It works. 
So, when it comes down to it, can I recommend The Force Awakens? Oh yeah! The Force is very strong with this movie. It scores a 4 Raptor Claw rating out of 4. And a lot of you might be saying, oh dude, you said that about Age of Ultron, and then it turned you realized, oh, Age of Ultron wasn't that good. Y you know what? Age of Ultron, that was because I was on that hype train so much. That's because I was like, yeah, Avengers 2! So much. With this, I was actually kind of hesitant to go see it. And then when I heard nothing but good things, I thought, you know what? I got nothing better to do. My friends are going, let's go. And it turned out to actually live up to all that hype. So you know what, guys? Go see it. You will thoroughly enjoy it. And as for me, I'm going to actually go back and probably see this a second time. And I can guarantee I'm going to buy a copy of it on Blu-ray. Because this movie is easily one of the best films this year. I will say that without a doubt. But as for what I'm going to do right after this... Well, i got to edit this review. got to do all that. <clears throat> but... There's a certain company, a certain asylum, who put out a certain film, which I was just able to get my hands on a copy of, thanks to my local hawk shop. So, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Anyhow, guys, that's all for this episode, and until next time, this is the Meteor Raptor saying keep cool, and I will see you guys around. Later.